is one of a series of war film communiques released by the War Department for showing to men and women workers in America's industrial arsenals. Photographed by Army cameramen, the scenes you're about to see are the war as it is, in all its phases, in all sectors, with the weapons and equipment forged in America for our fighting men. Established at strategic stations in all areas of our far-flung combat zones are reassembly and automotive service yards like this. Little Detroit's thousands of miles from home. This one is somewhere along the Mediterranean. It's run by an ordnance section of the U.S. Army. Convoys arrive from America with precious cargoes of mobile combat and transportation units. Arrive at an overseas port of embarkation located near this motor base. Vehicles being craned out of the hole to be shipped under their own power for duty on the firing line. Trucks, jeeps, mobile machine shops, road building equipment. A few months back, this assembly layout was a vast sea of mud. Today, it's a modern installation tool to handle anything on wheels. The standing rule is, get it rolling fast. The workers, trained crews, American civilians, American soldiers, French soldiers, Exiled workers representing countries in all Europe. Native workers. Workers of all creeds and colors. Citizens of the United Nations working side by side to get this war won. Rear wheels and axle housing for a two and a half ton truck. The frame. A truck is taking shape. Heavy, solid. The product of skilled hands. Hands in Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, California, Pennsylvania. Hands that pried the ore from the ground to make the steel. Hands that fashioned the parts. Native workers in this little Detroit are taught standardized methods of assembly procedure by Army automotive experts in English, French, Spanish. Vehicles used in this war number in the millions. Few realize how fast they are used up. Never in all history has an army been so critically dependent on wheeled transportation as now. In the Sicilian campaign alone, up to 54% of all our materiel was destroyed in action. Daily in other overseas war department assembly plants like this one, men are working round the clock. Working within the sound of gunfire, in danger of enemy air raids, working despite every obstacle to give our vehicles the last processing before they're sent into fighting service. Our assembled truck receives its coat of war paint. And finally, the insignia of the USA. Last checkup. Tires, motor, brakes, air filter, steering gear, ignition system. Inspected and approved. See that sign? It reads, through these portals flows a stream of faultless transportation to speed the downfall of aggressor nations. Transportation built by your hands. A familiar sight in combat zones is the insignia of the Troop Carrier Command. From the Southwest Pacific comes a visual report of what the Troop Carrier Command is doing in this area to supply our advanced bases with men and materiel. Jap flying fields are only minutes away by air, which means that aircraft of the Troop Carrier Command often run Tojo's gauntlet on routine flights to service our bases. American-held WOW is a typical base, operating in the shadow of enemy wings. WOW looks peaceful enough, but Jap snipers and patrols are in the surrounding ranges and often take pot shots at arriving and departing planes. The landing strip is a hill, reported as a 20% grade. By landing uphill at all times, an expert pilot can bring a heavily loaded transport to a stop within the short runway distance. Not all pilots make the grade on advanced fields. This one overshot the Bulola runway and crashed into an anti-aircraft emplacement. 
At WOW, a staff of trained Army Air Force meteorologists is on the job, gathering data on wind direction and speed for the pilots and making weather forecasts for the area. Wind and weather are not the only things observers spot. Sometimes they sight NIP bombers like these coming over on a routine raid on March 11, 1943. Notice our flak on the right, forcing the enemy planes to stay high. In one five-day period, more than 100 Jap planes bombed and machine gun wow in an effort to put it out of commission. They did not succeed. Naturally, they do some damage. However, for every one of our airplanes, the NIPs lose five or more. From nearby bases, our fighters go up to clear the WOW Port Moresby area. These P-39s also act as escorts for troop carrier transports. At Ward's Airdrome, outside Port Moresby, a formation prepares to take off. As each transport takes off, it circles the field, getting into formation as soon as possible. the formations used on routine flights in this area. Transports on such trips have strong fighter escorts. At destination, the transports scheduled to land peel off. Pilots who remember that landing at WOW is an uphill proposition won't have any trouble. Evacuation of the wounded by air is a regular procedure at WOW. This is the receiving point for transshipment of jungle casualties to Port Moresby. Most of these are Australian troops who have been fighting Jap patrols in the vicinity of Salamaua. All available personnel pitch in to handle shipments because the transports don't stay long. With NIPs likely to come over any time, the ships must be ready to rejoin formations and fighter escorts for the return trip to Port Moresby. Downhill takeoffs are the order of the day at WOW. It's one spot in the tropical southwest Pacific where the terrain actually helps the troop carrier command to do the job. Canal, an American task force assembles supplies and firepower for another offensive. Our objective was the air and naval base at Munda. We planned to pound Munda with our big artillery by first seizing Rondova five miles away. Crucial jobs for all in this task force. All depended on the fighting tools put in their hands by American labor and industry. This is the end of the assembly line. The men who stake their lives on the mines and mills and industrial strength of America. Randover shore installations come within range of our big naval guns. are coming. 
American boys determined to crush the enemy on his own territory. Our naval guns have driven him off the beach. Our men prepare for the landing. The weather is with us as our task force approaches Rendova. Rain and mist, ideal cover for our assault. Meanwhile, our main forces will remain on board offshore and wait for the signal beachhead established before following with our supplies and heavy equipment. On the success of the first assault depends the success of the entire operation. Boat bottom, scrape land, and here they come. Nothing is tougher than an assault like this. Nothing demands more nerve, more sheer guts. In every theater, Americans are fighting this kind of war. A war of assault from the sea, on grounds where the enemy has dug himself in. These and the following scenes were taken during the Rendova and Munda campaigns. A land battle wagon. Our spearhead becomes stronger. The first of our steel smashes in. Infantry tank team follows up. The Jap, like all savage fighters, has taken to the trees. We spread into the jungle to hunt him down. Randover is 20 miles of hot, steaming wilderness. A paradise for snipers. Sniper. We move cautiously. For years, the Jap has been perfecting this type of warfare. We're learning to excel him at it. Our men carry light weapons, rifles, BARs, carbines, machine guns. Every tree is a possible one-man enemy fortress. Visibility is almost zero. Death can come from above, from coconut log bunkers on the ground, from every side. The order is advance. Weapons plus skill plus courage add up to victory. Our men have skill and courage. Millions of willing American hands will see that enough weapons are delivered for moments like these. We'll keep on delivering until no more American lives are sacrificed to Japs and Nazis. These are the soldiers of Japan. Objective taken. Begin phase two. Beachhead established. Beachhead established. Our job on Randover now is to move in with all available supplies and equipment, with food for our men, fuel for our motors, ammunition, tools. Dig in and dig in fast. On nearby Munda, heavily garrisoned, the news of our landing on Randover is probably already known. We can expect counterattack from the air, strafing, bombing, bombardment by Jap naval units. We're counting on beating the Japs to the punch pounding Munda with our heavy land-based batteries before they can organize for counterattack. Landing more men to push the attack. Working against time, plowing roads through the jungle. Landing guns. Food rations processed, grown by our farmers. More food shipped, packed shipped thousands of miles to this combat front. Shells, small arms ammunition, piling up headaches for the Japs. Fuel drums, hard work, backbreaking necessary. More supplies moving in. Shells for our long range guns. Heavy caliber ammunition, armor piercing projectiles for the 105, the 155, for anti aircraft, more and more, and still not enough. Batteries to blast the enemy, guns being rushed into position against the deadline of inevitable Jap attack. More guns, guns of all caliber moving up into the treacherous jungle.
through clearings blasted by offshore bombardments, through underbrush, the 155 howitzer, through mud, the 105 howitzer, hub deep in mud, the 155 millimeter rifle. These big babies need plenty of clearance to pitch their shells. No time to chop down the coconut trees. Charges are pinned to the trunks. Our long toms in position, camouflaged. Blasting at the enemy on Munda. Jet dive bombers coming to knock out our guns. Counterattack from the skies. They score hits. Part of an ammunition dump. Oil. Vehicles. Guns. Materiel that will have to be replaced by the factory front. Material that can never be replaced. The price paid for Andova and Munda. Litter bearers evacuate the wounded to the battalion aid station. Here in a jungle clearing, an emergency aid station has been set up. Surgical dressings, life-giving plasma, medical supplies made by American workers to combat shock, wounds, loss of blood in a fight to the finish. Blood from home. To bring him home. Souvenir, bomb fragment, to be returned tenfold. What the Japs didn't get. Salvaged guns evening up the score. The sweat and guts of these men took Munda. Mission accomplished. But they won't stop there. <laughs> <laughs>